Hi everybody, Jeremy here and welcome to this quick tutorial on how to use Gaze and Pinch with our interactivity system. Now, currently Gaze and Pinch only works with the Quest Pro, but if you are a Quest 2 user, I still encourage you to follow along since I will be covering a few universal aspects of the interactivity system. So for this tutorial, I've built a simple AR media player application. And as you can see here, Shapes XR takes advantage of the Quest Pro's hand and eye tracking so users can interact with the virtual environment without the use of their hand controllers. So let's start off by just going through all the stages of this prototype. I activate the stages system by pressing up on my non-dominant hand thumbstick. And you can see here that I've got nine stages. So stage one is our beginning stage. And then when users click on the play button here, I want a movie to start playing up on the television screen in the back. So let's go ahead and move through the stages. And you can see here that I've created a few transition slides to suggest an animation. And then when users get to stage five, the movie's now up on the screen. And I've created this button over here so users have the option of going into movie theater mode. So when you click on this button, the movie scales up and moves off of the TV monitor into the environment and the lights in the room dim. So on a real quick side note, let me show you how I created this light dimming effect. I used this inverted cube shape here from the shapes menu and I chose the color black, unlit, and I brought the opacity down just a bit. And now if I go inside the cube, you can see that it puts a dark overlay on top of everything. So I just scaled the cube up and placed it in the room where I wanted it. And then I duplicated the cube to a few stages with varying degrees of opacity to suggest that the room is gradually dimming. Okay, before we add some interactions, we need to prep our scene first. So this play button here is the button we're going to add interactivity to. Now you can see that it's actually made up of two elements, the button itself and the play icon on top of it. So instead of leaving the button just like this, I first want to group these objects together so that Shapes' interactivity system will treat them as one object. So I just select both objects, and then I touch the group and press this button right here, and now our button is grouped together. Okay, this next thing I want to show you is really important. So we are currently on stage five, and this is the stage where users have the opportunity to click on this movie theater button right here. Now, this text is probably a little too small for this design, but I've done that intentionally to demonstrate something. When using the gaze and pinch system, you want to make sure you don't make your buttons too small. If they're too small, users are going to have a hard time fixing their gaze directly on those tiny little buttons but sometimes your design is going to require smaller buttons. So for this button, I'm going to add some margins to it. And I'm gonna do that by adding a cube behind the button. And then I'm gonna reshape it to make sure it's the appropriate size. And after I do that, I'm going to recolor the cube with black additive. And this is going to make the cube transparent. Then I'm going to group the two objects together. And now I have a button that's large enough for users to easily activate with eye tracking. All right, so let's go ahead and add some interactions. I'm back on stage one, and I'm going to activate the interactivity menu by pressing this lightning bolt button right here. And let's choose an on-click interaction. And now we have to assign that interaction to an object. So I do that by just pointing at the object and clicking with my trigger button. And you can see here, we've got this nice curved line that shows us which object our interactions are assigned to. So now I choose the stage I want users to go to when they click on the object and shapes automatically defaults to the next stage. So in this case, that's exactly what we want. So we're good to go. So these next few stages, these are my transition stages. So on these stages, I'm gonna add an after delay interaction and I'm going to set the timing to 0.1 seconds. And all that means is that this stage is going to display for 0.1 seconds before moving on to whatever stage I've selected. And once again, shapes defaults to the next stage. That's what we want, so we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some after delays to these next few stages. And I want users to finally end up on stage five. Okay, we're on stage five now, and this is where we want to add another on-click interaction, but this time we're gonna add it to this movie theater button. And uh, once again, we've got some animation transition slides here. So I'm gonna add some after delay interactions to those stages. 
And uh, yeah, we should be good now. So let's go ahead and give this a test. And I'm gonna test it with the hand controllers first just to make sure everything is working fine. So to start the interaction, make sure you're on your beginning stage and then activate the interactivity menu, press play. So I click on the play button and the movie pops up on the screen. And then I click on the movie theater button and the screen enlarges, it enters my physical world. Okay, looks like everything is working perfectly. So now let's move on to gaze and pinch. So to activate gaze and pinch, go back to your interactivity menu and press this icon here and choose eye gaze and hand pinch. And then return to the top menu, press play, and then set your hand controllers down and wait for your virtual hands to appear. Now, one cool thing is with gaze and pinch activated, you can see that Shapes XR automatically adds a hover effect. As I look at the button, it highlights. And then with a click of my fingers, the movie starts. And then I look at the movie theater button, pinch again, and there you have it. All right, just a couple of things before we wrap up. When you press play in the interactivity menu, you're automatically teleported to a viewpoint. So make sure you have a viewpoint set where you want people to be. And if you have more than one viewpoint in your scene and you teleport to the wrong one, you can just use your right thumbstick or the thumbstick on your dominant hand to toggle back and forth between the viewpoints. And lastly, if gaze and pinch isn't working, just make sure that you've activated eye tracking and hand tracking in the settings of your Quest Pro. All right, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Reference these tutorial videos as often as you need and have fun creating. Bye, everybody.